This is Mitos Savidis, uh, recording for Futex Live on the 25th of January 2015. It's a Sunday night. It's currently around uh, 10 o'clock at night. And as it stands, um, I wanted to go through a few of the event-driven risks uh, for this week, the final week of January. A um, little less... Um, to do than last week. Obviously last week we had a lot of central bank action. To put things into context, on Thursday we had the expanded asset purchases announcement out of the ECB. So the ECB basically announced a sovereign bond QE, uh, which in total with the Teltros, covered bonds and ABS purchases would come to 60 billion a month. So just to put that into context if you're watching this video um, and did not know this. So moving on and taking a look at some of the event driven risks as we said uh, looking at Monday I think the key thing dri that might be driving the market on Monday uh, today we had the Greek elections the snap elections and the two parties were New Democracy and Syriza. Syriza obviously the anti-austerity party New, New Democracy the the party that's currently in power and has been going along with the bailout terms uh, so as it stands uh, in Greece y to get a parliamentary majority you'd need 151 of 300 total seats to get a clear majority uh, either as a single party or in a coalition currently the exit polls see Syriza just on that border of a majority I mean uh, they're saying between 148 and 150, but most people are saying 150, so uh, just shy of that 151. Now, if we do get a surprise, uh, it's not really a surprise, but if we do actually get the 150, um, CDs does automatically a majority, and they, you know, they take office. So, uh, really, I'm not going to go through all the risks of what might happen if they get into p power and, you know, the... the you know, grandiose poker game that's going to be happening between Syriza and Germany uh, over whether they're going to leave the Euro or not. That's really not our job as traders. Uh, but just from current price action, what we do know is uh, that obviously there is some risk involved in them leaving the Euro or the Eurozone and just plainly uncertainty for the, for the common investor. Uh, so it could be some risk off moves coming into Monday um, regarding this. Obviously, Syriza was already uh, known to have had the major, uh, well, to have had um, a lead, and most people were expecting uh, them to come out on top, but not actually to have the majority. Now, if they do have the majority, we could see some risk off moves. To take a look at some markets, and I think it's very important to keep in mind that this is all within the context of ECB now launching a large-scale asset purchase pro program. So if we take a look at the Euro stocks 50 futures market, you can see this on a monthly chart. Um, you can see we were in a very big congestion zone in here, which we currently just broke out of. And if I just zoom out of this a little bit, you can see the recent, uh, when I say recent, I mean the recent all-time highs and they're not the all-time highs. All-time highs are actually were made in 1999-2000 uh, but the you know the major swing highs ahead uh, around the 4600 mark uh, around here made in 2007. So we just broke out of this little structure here and we're getting into this little um, I'd say vacuum zone possibly if we start breaking above this well last week's high which we made at 34.12 uh, then I think there's going to be scope for this market to move higher. Now, if um, the we do actually get a majority from Syriza uh, and there is a bit of a risk-off move, I would imagine, I wouldn't find it very surprising if the market starts bidding that back up to back up um, just within the context of QE. Um, it might be a great buying opportunity for investors. Uh, so that could be a scenario. Another scenario is if, if the risk-off flows are big enough to drive us back within this uh, structure as you can see this kind of triangular structure in here if we start getting some offers back inside it which I think is a very very unlikely scenario given the context of QE 
but then again we can never say never if we do actually get something like that and we start putting some of these fresh longs under pressure maybe we might see some offers um, as, you know some very quick and fast money moves to the downside uh, but again I think that is sl more of an unlikely scenario possibly a five percent chance of that it happening in my opinion uh, then again that's that is my opinion so uh, you should be trading at your own risk so if we move on to the euro dollar this is the euro dollar market the futures is a daily chart uh, we went through this last week we saw last time we went through it we were you know we hadn't seen these five days in here um, so We've broken outside of this flag and we've held obviously outside of it. The QE came in larger than expected. The market took uh, a very harsh bid to the downside, obviously the stimulus um, and the debasing uh, of the euro um, or in increasing the, the monetary base of the euro uh, causes inflation and the euro should be weakening on that. Uh, so we saw obviously as expected a very sharp move to the downside. Uh, the market was floored at around 111.19, as you can see in here. So, from a trading perspective, you know, again, if we do get a majority out of Syriza and there is a bit of uh, risk off moves, w which could translate into a, a you know, weaker knee jerk reaction in the euro, obviously the context of the market is already very bearish. So, I mean, you could imagine this could gap and continue. Um, uh, however, again, you, we see this very, very often when the market gaps and there's a lot of overnight inventory that's short or long, whatever, you know, however the market sets up. Come 8 o'clock in the European session when the cash market comes in, uh, if we're opening too far outside of value, you need to really watch those price dynamics because if you do start seeing bids come back into the market, you don't really want to be fighting that because sometimes you can get some very aggressive squeezes. Um, again, this week following last week's decision by the ECB is going to be very very flow driven so you're going to see a lot of um, very heavy flows big size coming to market mutual funds pension funds hedge funds really putting their money to work and it's still the beginning of the year so and right now we've gotten you know the major major event that the market was really waiting for out of the way as we've seen that out of the way possibly we can get some even more aggressive moves in the market so really I mean I'm, I'm really pointing out the technicals more just as um, just to keep your bearings about you just to know whereabouts you're trading really the technicals are going to take a back seat when there's when it's a flow driven market you really want to be watching the price action um, and watching your price ladders and seeing how the it interacts uh, how the bids and offers interact with each other uh, so that's really you're going to be your advantage over the next week I believe uh, you know, another data point we have on Monday is a German IFO. Wouldn't expect a lot of market moves out of this. Possibly even more fadeable, uh, just because you know we've just had ECB um, do its QE and it's out of the way now. So um, this was already a, a very you know well-known faded uh, data point. So you know, unless it's very out, very outside of line, I wouldn't imagine it sparking any trends. Uh, just to note, there's a Eurogroup meeting at uh, two o'clock. Possibly we could get some commentary on the, uh, on the Greek elections and the results of that. Keep your eye on that. Tuesday, data points. UK GDP previous at 2.6%. Looking at a relevant market structure, the, the, the cable uh, or the pound dollar. If we take a look at this market, we saw this last week. I went over this. We had this very big consolidation. Just going over this again. For those of you that have heard me say this time and time again, I just want to repeat it for those that are listening for the first time. Uh, we saw this big consolidation, a breakout. Um, in early 2014 we couldn't sustain that bid uh, we offered very heavily we broke back inside the structure and tested the other side of it as is um, expected in technical theory and as I said last week uh, just in here we had this inside weekly candle that was posted uh, just below the structure which is very neat uh, because we had that you know 9 nil vote on rate hikes out of the BOE last week so uh, there was a bit of market weakness, the pound taking a dive lower. Uh, so we've had this weak uh, candle last week, so obviously the context is still bearish in the pound. Um, if we get you know, even weaker numbers out of the GDP, 
uh, from GDP maybe we can see you know even heavier offers down because it's just within the context of the market on the contrary if um, uh, if we do get obviously better data we could see a small uh, relief rally in this market I wouldn't imagine people taking too many positions um, or moving too much of their money around before the FOMC on Wednesday but then again you should note that this year um, there's very m uh, you know many majority of investors are actually long the dollar so we could see uh, if there is some moves we could see some vicious moves the other way so on that day we also have US durable goods orders consistent at 0 0.6 percent we have the US consumer confidence which I think is quite important given the lower prices in oil we should be seeing a little bit more confidence out of the US now so in the market might be looking at that quite closely if we take a look at the the S&P 500 posting a very nice little structure market structure and here we have a three bar triangle this is the cash market SPX uh, you can see this weekly candle is within the two weekly range so we see a bit of uh, coiling in this market um, the pr recent price action has been a lot more bearish than the equity market so on a relative value basis we're seeing um, you know you can be getting a little bit more alpha out of Europe if you're long so it seems like it's easier to short um, your US market so if we do see s you start seeing a break I think uh, to the downside to be a lot more aggressive uh, to the upside again uh, we're still you know pushing into some very uh, strong resistances um, again if we do pop up and then you know break back below this area giving us a false break I would imagine a very vicious move to the other side and possibly even a break. I think a break of this structure to the downside could uh, could really you know give us uh, give us some strong moves and heavy moves to the downside but um, keep that in mind it's a pretty nice little structure you know forming in that S&P. Wednesday we've got a little bit of central bank policy as always we love these FOMC rate decision the forward guidance last time as we saw was the, the Fed could be patient in beginning to normalize the stance of monetary policy a comments of the, out of the Fed chair Yellen suggested that the Fed is not expecting to actually raise rates at least for the next couple of meetings so including the, like Wednesday's meeting uh, then we've got one in March and then we're possibly live for rate hikes in April but if we really look at these probabilities of a rate hike uh, using the 30-day Fed fund futures, you know the pro probability of a rate hike in June at them as it stands right now is 12%, very low. July 28%, and as you can see, all the way till next year, it's still 80 86% uh, a year from uh, from where we are right now. Uh, so really, if we do get a surprise, which no one's expecting out of the Fed meeting. A change in rhetoric, maybe a drop of the uh, the word patient um, or something along those lines. Maybe we could see some very vicious moves. If we take a look at a market structure that I think is quite neat on the U.S. five-year uh, treasury uh, treasury note, this is the yield chart on a weekly basis. Uh, as you can see, we've had a lot of trouble getting below this 122. Um, uh, so 1.2 percent yield just in here we've left this inside bar uh, last week so I think there's scope for this market um, to move uh, you know aggressively on either side it's it's neat that we've had we have this just above this level if we do see a break to the downside we could see um, you know some very vicious moves in, in the actual price of the five year to the upside on the contrary, if we see something unexpected out of the Fed, where they, you know, they they hint that uh, the markets possibly mispriced expectations of a rate hike, then we might actually see some moves to the upside in this yield. Um, <clears throat> something to keep your eyes uh, linked to. The ECB's Lind uh, is also talking on that day. Uh, again, we just had action out of the ECB. I wouldn't be expecting a lot of uh, attention to that, but you know keep your ears open Thursday data points we've got German CPI's again just said ECB did QE so we're not really expecting a lot of moves however if we do get weaker numbers we could see even more deflationary bids in the fixed income markets um, uh, and maybe even if we start seeing some you know some some better CPI numbers um, you know the market actually pricing in and you know inflation expectations to rise 
I think the fixed income market, the core fixed income markets, such as the Bund, um, you know, such as the, the, the French OATs, uh, we could see some sharp moves, uh, possibly to the downside. At the minute, we're very, very strongly bid. This is a daily chart of the Bund. Last time we talked, we were just in this region here. We had a sharp sell-off just before ECB. ECB came in. We had a knee-jerk reaction on the announcement of QE. Touched that 156 double O mark. That was just about 20 ticks below, uh, above, sorry, uh, the starting price of the year. And then we just had the most amazing, vicious bid uh, to the upside. Completely engulfed this day. Uh, and as you can see, we opened the next day very, very strong as well. So we, you know, closing the week uh, very, very strong. The market, uh, in my opinion, not actually pricing in any sort of imminent inflation uh, with you know even as the QE came in larger than expected every time we got announcements for QE before it was announced uh, you know the bun was selling off this time uh, you know even with a larger one we didn't actually get any sell, sell off so um, possibly you know looking at inflation expectations that's really going to be the you know the barometer going forward uh, I think which is going to be driving the market on Friday, just to close things off, we got again European CPI previously at minus 0 0.2 uh, percent expect. I mean, last time it was at 0 0.2 percent, minus 0 0.2 percent. We've got US GDP advanced consensus at 3.3 percent. So something to keep your eye on. It's the I think it's the first reading. So um, you know, bearing in mind is the first reading, we could see some moves. Um, well known that you know these this kind of this um, this data point usually gets faded just because most institutions have their indexes or indices where they follow the GDP and they have estimates going in so uh, it's usually kind of uh, almost a sell, sell the fact kind of situation but definitely keep an eye on it we do get volatility on that number and finally again we have the month ends um, on Friday so institutions can be putting some money to work at the end of the month uh, possibly the, you know the end of the first month of the year so you know, just because we're going to have a lot of liquidity, we could see some, you know, a lot of flows coming in on that day. Usually when there's more liquidity, institutions tend to do a little bit more uh, size. So if we look at just the risk and money management plan um, that I put forth for this week, um, you know, just taking a look very briefly, we have, you know, three event driven risks on, on Monday, three on Tuesday, one Wednesday, one Thursday, and two on Friday. I've jotted down the relevance, but really, I've actually spread out the risk allocation for this week, I think, quite evenly. Uh, just because, again, I'm just going to note that it's going to be a very flow driven market. <coughs> so you want to be giving yourself a chance every single day, I think. It's, it's not going to be a case where the market's going to be quiet if there's no news or if there's no events. <coughs> so you really want to be trading with the flow, giving yourself uh, your chips on a daily basis. I've left a little bit uh, less of risk on Thursdays. We don't really have anything. Wednesday we've got obviously the FOMC, so I've put in a little bit more risk allocation there, as opposed to Monday and Tuesday, uh, and Friday obviously month end. So I'm giving that kind of an equal weighting with Wednesday. <coughs> so that's been my weekly trading roadmap for this week. Hope you guys liked it. Have a great trading weekend. Um, good luck, and um, we'll speak again on Friday. Ciao.